The opinions expressed on the following sponsored program are strictly those of the host, guests, and callers, and not necessarily those of this station, its staff, management, or sponsors. Welcome to the wonderful world of wellness with Dr. Andy Mencia. This medical program heard from 7 to 7.30 each Saturday right here on WSBR 740 AM is brought to you by the Adult and Geriatric Center under the medical direction of geriatrician Dr. Andy Mencia. Good morning, Anita. Welcome Good to my show. Good morning. I love that. I'm so glad you make me come up to be on your show so early in the morning. You're going to become famous here. You're, I love this. You planned that. What is your show, no, really? It, just came it like is that. your show. Actually, I feel like it's I am our a guest. Show. No, oh, it's ours. It's our okay. Show. I don't have an ego problem with this. Without I'm just you, privileged. I'm nothing. Together, oh, we are one. Without you, I'm nothing. <laughs> without you, I'm nothing. <laughs> Together we are one. <laughs> Pick it up, Richard. <laughs> well, you know, we've been listening to the news talking about the marathon in New York City. I am City. so proud of uh, the mayor of New York City, Bloomberg. Mayor Bloomberg, for uh, stepping up to the plate and looking out for the people of New York City more than the pride of being a New Yorker. Absolutely. And, uh, it's, it was the right thing to do. You know, it's a lot of need. Uh, as a matter of fact, I have a collection box in my office where I'm collecting money so we can send it, make it, make sure that it goes to to the uh, people of New York, the people that have suffered from uh, Sandy. So uh, I think he did the right thing. I mean, you know, the marathon uh, is a uh, an image that we people from all over the world they come to to watch uh, this event. But uh, you have to be realistic. Right now, our people need help. And people that come to visit us, they should understand that. Yeah, because even the restaurants, all these people are trying to survive now to get warm food. I was just talking earlier, Darwin Porter, who lives in Staten Island, has no electricity. He called in on a cell phone. He said, you know, people are just in a terrible state. So let's save the resources for them. Exactly. Right? Exactly. And that's kind of what you wanted to talk <coughs> about this morning. It that has... was the inspiration of, uh, of uh, today's topic. Yeah, it's uh, how to prepare for medical emergencies. Uh, and look at New York City. It's a, it's a wonderful city. And I got the privilege of living there after I relocated from Hawaii living in Virginia for a few years, and then uh, toward New York City and New Jersey. And uh, it's a wonderful city. And uh, look what happened to us when we are not prepared. And it starts in each of our, our home. You know, we have to learn to be prepared as an individual so that we can be prepared as a community. Dr. Mencia, but a lot of times things don't happen in our home. I just saw something on YouTube, as a matter of fact, that someone in an airport was having a heart attack and and the people started watching. And then they gave you a, some questions. They said, what should you do? You called 911. But there are these things in the airport now to help. The defibrillator. Why don't you talk the about that? That's an emergency, isn't it? That is an emergency. Uh, the defibrillator, they are very easy to use uh, for the right thing. A uh, defibrillator doesn't mean if a person is having a heart attack, you, it doesn't mean you have to use the machine. It's only when the rhythm of the heart goes out of whack that we want to bring the rhythm back into the heart. So the defibrillator is a good thing to have there. But uh, beyond that, what's important is the thing that we should do if we're going to travel. You know, how to, you know, if it's, if if I'm having a heart attack and I don't have my list of medication, I don't have the, the phone number for my doctor, I don't have my allergies with me, uh, basically you are at the mercy of people trying to get to know you. You become a... A, 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 uh, a case study. A, a case study, an <laughs> unknown patient you know, with unknown family and everything is, is a big problem. You have to have something... And that's what the topic is today. What are the kind of things that we want to have with us so that if they have to use the machine in the airport or if the uh, EMS get calling or in flight, uh, you suffer a heart attack or you suffer a seizure, 
and they had to pull that plane down and take you to a hospital where nobody knows who you are. You have to have those information with you so that people know what to do. Uh, do you know what ICE is? I-C-E. I, I have seen it and read it, and it's the way Be that careful, you have so your eyes doesn't come off your cup here. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> right, so... Eyes on your phone. Eyes is uh, in case of emergency. So when you put contacts on your phone, if you put eyes on those contacts, so if you on your phone, you put... I put on my phone, put your name down, and I put eyes on it, and the 911 people or the police going through my phone... Then they see, oh, Anita Finley, eyes. So in case of a contact, they will be calling you. Oh. So you put, you know, when you have people on your phone, and, w you know, all of us walk around with uh, at least one phone. <laughs> I see some people with two or three. Uh, but <laughs> where do you put one. the eyes? I see. Where do you put that? You just put you that in? You put that name and then, and then parenthesis ice. eyes. Oh, thank you. I don't, then, I'm so glad you told so, me that. So, you know, those are things that we need to start doing because, you know, there's a lot of envy for us being, you know, being American. You know, what happened to us in 9-11 is a wake-up call. You know, it's, we didn't solve the problem yet. You know, I think as a country, it did bring us together, and we're pulling together, and we're getting better, but we are not there. Don't fool yourself. So, you know, we need to learn to be uh, prepared, be ready. We don't have to make a tunnel and dig into a tunnel so we all go in there because of a nuclear attack. But all the kind of things that we do for everyday uh, situation, like what our uh, fellow Americans are going through now in the Northeast. And look at the weather now. It's so cold over there. Oh, my God, you know, after all of that, look what they're going through. So the kind of thing you want to do, you want to make sure that all your important health information is easily available. Uh, and, you know, use, use your imagination. If you are good with computer, you can put this in a chip and carry that chip with you in your, in your wallet. I've seen some people with business cards that you flip a chip out and you put it into the computer and you get information. So it's tiny. Those chips are very tiny. They go into the computer. They give all the information. It's a, lot, a lot of information can be given. It can be on your keychain. I see. My, I only have a flash drive. I mean, I'm very glad like you're doing this. Flash drive I could have like a flash that. drive in my purse, and that would have all my information on it. But would the person know if, they, if something happens to me and they're going to go in my purse and see that? If you put on the, uh, on the on the uh, flash drive ice in case oh, of emergency, good. when they, if, when they see it, you. then they say, okay, this is for emergency. I'm going to do that, ice. Now, uh, so, you know, you want to put all your health information there, mm -hmm. uh, and so, or all in paper, if you are a paper person. You have your information well organized, well written, make it easily easily available that people don't have to dig to your purse to find it. You know, they're in a place like, you know, uh, the woman carry their big purse, and then they have the small purse where you have your ID. I put mine by my driver license because usually when somebody stops you, the first thing they're going to go after is your driver license to get information. So I usually put my information right behind my driver license. So when my driver license comes out, then the information that you need is right there next to it. Uh, but whatever you think is best, that's what I want you to do. Uh, <clears throat> uh, make copy of it and then give it to to important people in your life. So, you know, uh, if you make a copy of that and then you give it to your husband, uh, to your best friend, your, your next doctor? door neighbor. You know, your, your doctor may not your doctor, uh, have it. Uh, yeah, exactly. Well, I you mean, know, doctors are supposed opinion, to. Yeah, you, but supposed a, lot of, to, right. a lot of people don't have that. You know, so uh, uh, so that you have a copy, but also other people have a copy, right? And they can they can utilize that, uh, and then put your emergency contact information, like your home, your work, your cell phone number. Don't go crazy writing stupid stuff that people don't need to know. I don't need to know your bank account. Uh, I don't need to know your password. Uh -huh. You know, all you need to put stuff in your phone and in your uh, 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 paper, emergency stuff for a stranger to look at. 
Please for your don't. health, it's really yeah, your health. Cause some people go crazy with the with the with the flash drive, and then they start putting all kind of uh, bank information. Which and you don't, of course, you don't want. You that. don't need that stuff. No, and you shouldn't you put that in anyway. Password. You don't need right. none of that stuff. You need to have the uh, emergency contact. Um, yeah, but I have to tell you that my house, I do have a file in case something happened for my son to know bank accounts and know all that. That's so that's yeah, exactly. right. Yeah. So that's another emergency thing. And that should be on thing. a safe. Yeah. yeah. That yeah. should be on a safe. Uh, you know, and uh, you, you know, you need to know, like, if I'm gone today, how can my family carry on? Exactly. You know, and, what your and, lawyer's name is, your your insurance companies, and all that, right? Because, you know, a lot of people don't understand that if you don't do that, and you pass on. And your kids or your husband or wife is unable to to get this. It's gonna go to the state. <laughs> They're gonna take over. It's gonna go to the state because they don't have nobody to claim it. You then know, you get a guardian. Then, <laughs> yeah, then you get a guardian and all those things. So the emergency contact information you want your home, your work, your cell phone number, uh, and some basic information about you. Uh, and then you want your doctor's phone number. You don't have to write all of them by your, at least your primary physician, the person you go to uh, that know all of your information. Now, if you start writing a ton of doctors, they wouldn't know who to call. You know, you write a, a doctor, <clears throat> and then all your consultants should be sending the note to your doctor. So if you have a pacemaker, and they call your primary care doctor. Your primary care doctor has the information from your cardiologist, and the primary should be able to submit that. The other thing that you want to have is if you tend to go to a given hospital, you want that hospital phone number. Mm. They are general phone number and the emergency room number. Really? Why is that? Yes, that's so important because, for example, a person is traveling in uh, Alaska, and have an accident and end up in an emergency room, they don't, they're going to do a CAT scan. They look and you, they have the information there that you have been admitted at a given hospital in uh, South Miami. They call the hospital and say, we're going to do a CAT scan. And, oh, 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 don't do a CAT scan on that person with contrast because of allergy. The person will die on you due to allergy. You cannot do contrast on that person. Do it without contrast. And they will save you. They will save your life. Uh, while they are trying to help you. Because most of the time when these accidents happen, you aren't near your own hospital. You're not near your home, exactly, right? Exactly, exactly. So, but I didn't I know mean, it's a hospital... Pity, it's a pity when they happen near your own home and hospital and you don't have that information and you go to a hospital, not to the one that you normally go to, you go to the one next door and then you get killed there because <laughs> they gave you contrast. You know, so carry this information so... The, the physician and the emergency room uh, department is able to obtain as much information as possible. If they see your list of medication uh, is not too clear, they might call the emergency room if they cannot get a hold of your doctor and say, you know, what's the last admission? What was the list of medication that person came in with? And at least they can get you close to where you're supposed to be if no one is available to give that information. Should you give behalf. them your pharmacy? Uh, also, your pharmacy really? is another phone when number. you think about that. Right, because the pharmacy will immediately print out, because everything is computerized, the pharmacy will print out the history of your medication. I had a patient that came to me, and uh, the daughter came from California uh, because the person couldn't live alone any, any longer. And... Uh, he was relocating to Grand Court, one of the uh, retirement community in Broward, and the daughter didn't know what to do. And out of desperation, she goes, said, let me call the pharmacy. She saw the bottle and said, do you have a list? She said, yeah, we can send you a list for perfect. the whole year it's perfect. of what he's been getting. Let me just tell everybody you're listening to Dr. Andy Mencia, of course, the wonderful world of wellness. And uh, each month we have a wonderful article. I think you're going to enjoy the article coming up in our next issue, November but for now, you need to be able to have his phone number. Get his phone number. First, go to him. Then get his phone number. 
right by your driver's license. I like that. On the other side of the driver's license. Put his phone number. Say, call my doctor, <laughs> Dr. Mencia, 954-489-1345. Yeah. You're going to get calls from people who I don't know who that is. It's okay. They want you. Yeah, you know, but you, everyone should get to see you at least once, if they're, they're, even if they're well. Go see that's you at least once, right? right. So that's you know who they are. That's preventive medicine. Okay, but let's talk about this. So somebody, you, you, you've seen a patient once. Now you get a phone call. What? How do you even know? You're home. How do you, well, how do usually, you know what's going on? Yeah, usually the people in the practice, Diana and, and Luis and Juan and uh, Vionella, you know, they are well trained. And when the person come in, uh, they will sit down with the patient and they... The first thing is that we get is a good history. We go into the into the past, you know, diseases as a child from childhood, uh, any hospitalization, major surgery, uh, medication you have taken. Why you have taken those medication? Did they help you? They didn't help you. Allergies. If you are allergic to something, what happened to you? And that's important. You bring to your doctor because some people go and say, "Well, I'm allergic to." Um, penicillin. Or a cortisone shot say, or something, right? Right. Um, penicillin, well, why are you allergic to penicillin? Well, I get an upset stomach when I take it. Well, that's not a true allergy. That's that's a more of a side effect of the drug. That's not an allergy. So if you have an infection of the heart, the main treatment is going to be with intravenous penicillin. And you don't want to avoid uh-huh. that, or, you know, to survive. That's the gold standard. That's the best thing out there. Even really? today, absolutely. So if you say I'm allergic to penicillin because my little toe turned blue, and that's not a true allergy, then you know you don't. So you want to know, you want to find out what happened to me when I took penicillin. Mm-hmm. Did my throat was shutting down, and they have to intubate me, or they have to, you know, to do a tracheostomy? That's a true anaphylactic reaction. If you develop a rash, that's a true uh, reaction to the drug. So. It's important that you know if you're allergic to something and uh, <clears throat> and to write down uh, what is it that you're allergic to and what kind of reaction you would normally have. Okay. If you are unsteady on your feet, a lot of our uh, uh, patients, and that's not geriatric, also younger patients that have, have strokes or a car accident and they are steady on their feet, they use a cane or they use a walker uh, as a consequence of, of the accident or, or just part of aging, uh, you want to have a, a pendant or a system that you can alert somebody if you fall down. Hmm. So if you have a fall and you stay on the floor for a day or two, one of the complications of that fall, you can just you know fall down and hurt your hip so bad that you cannot get up. So you say, oh, tomorrow my neighbor is going to come to check on me, so I'm just going to stay here and lay down on the floor. <laughs> That's you, so dumb. Do you know how often that happens? Does it? Do you see oh this a God, lot? So do you really? Often, yes. And the problem with that is when you do that, when you lie down in a position for a prolonged period of time, especially if you have problems with circulation, now you are increasing the risk of developing a clot in the veins. Hmm. And then that clot, when people come and move you, your next door neighbor, neighbor help you to stand up, and uh, try to walk to see if you can, if you, you know, if you can walk and see if you are okay. Once you start walking, that thrombos now, that clot of blood can travel to your lung and kill you. Amazing. So, oh, you know. Oh, so that's important. So a pendant, so you can pendant, either buy them or lease them. And exactly. We see them on television so you, so all the time. Right. Alert. Or, you know, sometimes uh, people try to have the phone always close to them. You know, so that you can make a phone call and have somebody just come over and, and move you. Um, with the economy, sometimes a pendant might be too expensive. Uh, but, uh, you know, write to your Congress and, you know, uh, there are so many people out there that could use this thing. And it should be covered by the insurance. You know, you, know, you shouldn't have to pay it out of pocket for those things. That's one other thing I disagree but with. But the cell phone is a good idea, too, the that you just phone, yeah. said. You could uh, always carry keep... your cell phone with you wherever you go. You know, uh, Somebody can break into your house. You have your cell phone. You dial uh, 911, and mm-hmm. you stay there. And, you know, 
uh, they will be talking. They're going to track that phone call, where it's coming from. You might not be able to talk while the burglar is in your house, <clears throat> but while that phone is on, you know, all you have to do, instead of talking, tap on the microphone of your phone. You tap, and you and the the person on the 911 end knows that this is an emergency and will understand that you cannot oh, talk. Oh, really? You tap so on you the phone. you tap on the phone. and you, you can't talk. And you keep your volume down so nobody can hear that 911 is on the line. And 911 will track that phone call and will be there for you. These are good little hints. Wow, I'm it's, learning a lot. It's good to be the doctor. Yes, it's good <laughs> <laughs> to be a smart doctor. <laughs> I love this. Um so make a list of your medication and make make a, uh, write down why you're taking the medication. Ah. That's that's very, a very list important. list and why. Right. Um, and then you want to carry that with you and uh, put it in your wallet. Uh, and c- remember, keep a, copa, keep, a, keep a copy at home and keep it updated. Okay? Hmm. Uh, some of my patients are so good. They listen to the show and they are so good. They type it. And you see sometimes they come <laughs> typing black, blue, and red. <laughs> I say, why is it red here? Oh, that was the latest one you gave me. I'm blue. <laughs> That's great. <laughs> Another one of my patients, she put a, she has a color code. She has a color code for the neurologist, one for oh the cardiologist, gosh. one for me, one from the dentist, wow. one from the podiatrist. Talk about so, a type A. <laughs> <laughs> very, very organized. But she was a high-level executive. Right, so very, right. Very, very organized. My goodness. That's... Uh, and then always let the doctor know. When you go to a doctor, sometimes the staff might not ask you, but let the doctor know what hospital you want to be, right. you know, you, you should be going to in case of an emergency. Well, that brings up a, wait, you got to stop. It mm-hmm. brings up a good yeah. point. So let's say, so you're my doctor, of course, down there, but I live up in Boynton Beach. So, and let's say there's an emergency. They're going to take me to the closest hospital. Now, what will happen when they call you? When they call me, I will call Dr. Martinez, who uh, do the admission at Boynton Beach for me. And uh, I will give him all the information that are pertinent to you so that you are well taken care of. And the emergency room department will be uh, will be sending then if, let's say, your husband is calling me and say, oh, Anita is on the way to the emergency room. I will be calling the emergency room and letting the emergency room, these are her allergy, these are her medication. Uh, she has a stent put in. She has a pacemaker. She had this. She had that. She has a hip replacement. All of those uh-huh. information become very important because if you have, let's say, a, a, a shoulder or hip replacement or knee replacement, they cannot do an MRI on you. That's right. Because, you know, it's contraindicated. Hmm. Uh, if you have kidney failure, they cannot put a lot of contrast on you. So it's contraindicated. So uh, uh, the the key is the high level of communication among all the providers. And information. Right. The key communication is communication and information, and information right? information, right. And that information to make it, you know, you see in our, in our office, we have everything computerized uh, so that we can transmit the record. And uh, we have a device now that when you are at the office, you give your email address, and then the uh, system that we have, the medical record system we have, will send you an email with a password. And then you take the password and you go back into my system, and then you can open your own record Whoa. from home or from wherever you That's are. Fantastic! So you can just open the record. You have a password that only you can get to it. So it's still private and confidential. And then you can get there, and you will be able to pull out some information, not your entire record, because there are some sensitive uh, information there that cannot be uh, put to the public, like uh, psychiatric and uh, um, psychiatric treatment and, and so on, certain mm-hmm. surgery, certain things that you know uh, rem- will remain private. But at least you know going in and looking at your blood test that will be. You know, accessible. That's to the fabulous. Patient. That's a great system. It is. It is. It is very uh, friendly for the patient. Easy to to locate. Okay. And then the other thing we want to do: look at New York City, and uh, let's come back to us because you know we should be expert at this. You know, New York has not. They are not seeing hurricane every year. We are. So, 
where if especially if you just relocated from where you used to live uh, a year ago look at your route of escape in case of an emergency Good right point. Yep. Route what of is escape. yeah exactly what is the evacuation plan that you have if you live in a building how do you evacuate that building and teach this to your kids if you have kids in the house for God's sake because sometimes you might be down throwing the garbage and something happened. And if the kids know what the drill is, and my father used to make us do the drill all the time. Really? He had a drill? Had, we had to drill like a family. He would go in and, you know, take the uh, power in the house, shut the light down. And we all had to know what to do, where to go, and where we were all going to meet. Bill is in trouble. I'm going to come home and say, okay, I want an evacuation plan. <laughs> <laughs> you should have. Hey, you that's know. very good. Uh, and when you do it, you'll be amazed how things come back to you because, you know, you are prepared. It's preparedness that counts. Uh, then outside your building or outside your house or your condominium or what have you, then you want to know what avenue are you supposed to be driving on and, you know, and stay away from those uh, uh, emergency uh, routes that are not uh, meant uh, for you. Uh, but you want to know where you should be going, where the, the nearest place that you can go and, and seek for shelter uh, so you can uh, uh, stay there. Uh, if you relocate it, where's your nearest hospital, where's your nearest police, where's your fireplace? If you have a fire extinguisher in your place, take the fire extinguisher, take it to the fire department or have somebody check it for you. I want you to stop there. Fire distinguishers. We have one. Bill insists on that. We have one in our kitchen. We have one in the downstairs bathroom. He thinks it's very important. Absolutely. And I'll bet most people don't have fire extinguishers in their house. Exactly. So exactly. that's a very good point. So everyone should go out and buy a small. You only need a small one, right? Actually, you know, we used it about three months ago. Our refrigerator and started to on, smoke. Yeah, and the and, size and of the house, it depends. Well, this is a oh yeah. Well, this is fairly. It's small enough, but our refrigerator was smoking, and we pulled it out. There was a little electrical cord fire, and we got that and and did and pull it. it out. Yeah, that you want to have, uh, and the way Bill is doing it is the way to do it. You want to have in different area of your house because you can have a fire in a place that you cannot get out of there. So if you are in the basement and there's a fire on the outlet of the basement, you're stuck. Uh, you know, if you are so you in should have them in different locations. Different locations. Okay, and then you have to get them checked. You said, and you have to get them checked. It's by law. Like you know, in the in all businesses, they come and check to see if those uh, fire extinguishers have been checked. So you have to have them checked and uh, make sure they are checked. If you live in a common uh, community where you share an elevator, you know you have the right to go and find out is my elevator being inspected properly by certified people is the fire extinguisher being checked is do we have a list of that it's your right you pay maintenance fee that's for that <laughs> you know something you just said and i know we're going to run out of time but the condominiums if you're on the 10th floor of a condominium we never run out of time if, time if, runs out of us that's true if you're on the 10th <laughs> floor of a condominium and you have a hard time walking down you're going to be stuck. You're going to be stuck if you are on on a floor. If you are at a height that you know it's going to be difficult and you perceive an emergency, you better start taking that elevator, go down, stay down there, stay in a place that you know in case you have to evacuate that building, you are already down at the ground level. Mm. It's going to be much easier on you. But if you stay up there... And you sometimes, you know, especially in those condominiums, they have in the lobby, they have plenty of room there yeah. where people can go and, you know, and use the, the body system, you know, and let the, your neighbor know, yeah. you know, I have this here in case of an emergency, right. I have this ready to go. We have to, we have to give you phone number 954-489-1345. We are and, open on Saturday. Yeah, he's rushing off to Saturday. <laughs> no, it's, a, I mean, he's one of the few doctors I know that does this. He's a fantastic physician. You just really need to go see him. 954-489-1345. Medicare and most insurances are accepted. Uh, they're right located at uh, 1608 East Commercial Boulevard, very close to Holy Cross Hospital. And um, I and also get on their website. You can hear a lot of his shows, uh, geriatrics.tv. Well, thank you. I am 
my husband's going to really get this. Uh, he's he's going to be happy. Well, say, you yeah. go, Dr. Mencia, you're no, my No, it's son. true. Because, <laughs> but we like emergencies. You know, we know about emergencies. And, and But I have a few things you told me here that I've got to do. Okay, thank you, Dr. Mencia. Thank and you, enjoy Anita. your Saturday with your patients. And we'll All, be always. We'll be right back with uh, Joe Carp. And, uh, and then don't forget the Cutting Edge Show. Uh, Dr. Charles Stewart, the orthopedic surgeon, will be on that show from 8.30 to 9 this morning for, on WNN. So. Thanks for listening to The Wonderful World of Wellness with Dr. Andy Mencia. Be sure to tune in each Saturday morning from 7 to 7.30 right here on WSBR 740 AM.